Well, hello and welcome to the CRM Zen Show, where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 298, Male Pattern Calmness. This is for Friday, April 12th, 2024. From Zanata Consulting, I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Colt, and let's get right on into the show. Yes, we shall. So, Tyler, you having a good week? Yeah, busy week, nice weather, looking forward to a, a good weekend for once. Uh, did see rolling into Vegas, you're getting into the hot season now, right? Yep, 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 we're in the 80s, and I guess heading upward from there. Um, you know, I just moved in, set up my internet, I've got a smart home, I've got 89 devices connected to my network. And I found out that the mesh network that was given to me by the fiber company is complete garbage. And so now I'm going to be spending the weekend reconfiguring 89 devices to a new network. I'm excited. It's going to be great. But it's that new Thanks Wi-Fi 7. Wi-Fi 7, which is supposed to be not, not 6, 7. <laughs> so what can go wrong? Anyway, all right, buddy. Before we get into the show, let's have a quick word from our sponsors. Junk data can clog up your CRM, making it harder to focus on the records that matter. Next thing you know, you've got a mountain of records to sort through, and you're not even sure where to start. This is why we created the Zanata Health Check for Zoho CRM. This extension reads your Zoho CRM's users, leads, deals, accounts, contacts, and tasks data, and provides you with a monthly summary straight to your inbox of some of the key indicators of data quality for these core modules. With the Zanata Health Check, you'll get notified in your monthly report whether or not you have unused Zoho CRM licenses, or if you have contacts missing email addresses, or accounts with no associated contact. In addition, you'll get links to helpful videos and blogs from the Zanata Resource Library showing you how you can clean up your system and keep it clean. We also include buttons on each of the core modules that let you generate your health check report whenever you need it. The Zanata Health Check for Zoho CRM. A clean system is a better system. Download today on the Zoho Marketplace. Are you struggling to get your team trained in using Zoho effectively? Considering the hefty costs of team meetings and onboarding sessions dedicated to Zoho training, there has to be an easier way. Say hello to efficiency with our Zoho team training courses. Zoho CRM made easy. Become a project management pro, top tier customer support, and maximize your marketing impact. Are you ready to equip your team? Start today at zanata.com slash training and let us lead the way. All righty, Tyler, let's get straight on into announcements and events here. So over at club.zanata.com, that is our online community. It's where you can engage with other Zoho users, and it's also where we track all of the events going on in the world of Zoho, not just the ones we're putting on, but the ones Zoho are putting on and other people. Uh, for us, we've got the really big, big, big show coming up. It's Zoho on and beyond, an overview of every Zoho application. I'm going to prognosticate and say this is going to come in at over two hours, Tyler. That's my guess. Yeah, easily. I, you know, I don't yeah, know. Easily. <laughs> It's going to be big. Um, and uh, not that we've pre-recorded or anything and we know it's going to be, but it's, uh, yeah. But that, anyway, that's going to be dropping on April 16th. And then next month, we're going to be talking about the ever so obscure Zoho data platform. We don't talk about this very much, but uh, it's a very cool application, has a lot of great uh, uses. And so uh, going through that. And then we're still trying to figure out what we're doing in June. Zoho has got a whole bunch of events that dropped over this last week. So you'll want to head over to uh, the events tab and click on Zoho. They've got just a ton of stuff going on. And then uh, we've got a European partner uh, is going to do a Zoho CRM basic demo. So if you want to do a little basic deep dive into CRM, is there such a thing as a basic deep dive? I don't know a basic <laughs> overview uh head on over and check out Motviz uh demo that they're going to be putting on all right with that let's jump right on into the news well tyler i have to say in one of the most bizarre decisions that zoho has ever made they are going to eliminate SMS-based 
OTP. I, for the life of me, I don't understand the logic behind this. If you don't know, uh, SMS-based OPT is where you get something to your mobile phone. It's a six-digit code, a 10-digit code. You type it in and it lets you in. So after you put your name and password in, you get a code. Is it the best form of uh, two-factor authentication? No, but it's better than nothing. And uh, basically, Zoho does let you just turn off uh, two-factor authentication. You can turn it off all the way around. Um, but now uh, you can't use text-based. They don't say when, by the way. I've gone through the article. It doesn't say when it's going to happen. It doesn't say when they're going to do it. It's just, uh, you know, deprecation of SMS-based OT. Huh? Yeah, it's a weird update. You know, I um, because I get it right to a certain degree. It is the least secure, right? Like having a local app is better. Um, but right. yeah, I was doing some research to see, like, is this something that's going around? You know, like are other SaaS companies deprecating SMS? And I'm not seeing a lot of that. Um, it seems like you know all the big providers are still allowing you to do this. Um, they list off a couple different like security risks and threats that are inherent with an SMS OTP, but. My concern, right. honestly, in this type of situation is that um, rather than people moving over to an app on their phone, uh, they're just going to turn off 2FA rather you right. know, than, than download the app, which is then worse right, than at least having the SMS mode. So this is an interesting one. I, I would assume they're going to get a little bit of pushback on this. Um, I don't really know why you would brute force remove this mode of OTP. It's a little funky. Right. Right. And by removing it, people won't have set up any other form of two factor. So you just turn it off and now you don't have two factor. Even if it's weak two factor, you have nothing. So yeah. anyway, um, the funny thing is there's zero comments on this thread. So I just yeah, I don't. expect a little more uh, uproar over it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe no one's noticed it yet. Maybe blah, that can't be true. Anyway, moving on with the news. Uh, you now have stage automation in Biggin. So basically when you're in a Biggin pipeline and you move from one stage to the next, you could basically trigger some various automations. This is oftentimes handled in Zoho CRM. It's handled with workflows. Yeah. Um, but, uh, they've kind of made a nice little, uh, you know, nice little feature. I like it. And I think most of what you can do with these stage automations, you could have already done with workflows. I think the big difference here, if you're watching us on YouTube, you can see, you know, like in the Kanban view itself, you can click into a sub menu and actually create stage automations right from there. Um, I'm noticing them doing this more in Big In and a couple other apps where like tables, for example, where they're adding the ability to do automation within the same screen that you normally work in just so people don't have to go into the backend settings. So you can do things like send emails, change owners, update fields, create tasks, like a lot of those standard kind of workflow actions. Um, so pretty nice. I mean, I, making it easier to do this is always a good thing, right? And for a lot of these quick and easy uh, workflow automations, this is a pretty logical way to set them up. Um, so yeah, nice to have. I mean, I don't think it's it's new because you could always do it with a workflow, but I think for some people it might be more straightforward to do it this way directly from the Kanban view. That's nice. I always like this. You know, we, we Zoho connect. We always talk about the Kanban views and the tasking in there. It had the same thing. You could, whatever column you're in, you could just click three dots and you could not yeah. this level of automation, but you could say, if I move it here, then, uh, extend the, the due date by five days or whatever, right? Do yeah. this, do whatever. And it's, uh, it's nice to not have to go back in and to the backend settings and set that up just to do it real like this. So very cool. Kind of a small little update, but if you're a big end user, um, check it out. See what you like. All right. And moving right along with the news, we've got the what's new in Zoho books, April, 2024 update. The interesting thing about this is normally when the Zoho books update comes out, we actually have like 15 others, right? Like finance, uh, you know, invoice and, yeah. billings and all the others, but this is the only one I saw. So uh, maybe they're just saying, hey, and they're usually all identical, right? They just say the same thing, except with less things, depending on what you're in. But here is the Zoho Books April 2024 update. WhatsApp integration, this seems to be a big thing with Zoho. They are really rolling out WhatsApp integration pretty much across everything that they're doing. So 
good on you, Zoho. Um, what is the other one in here? Oh, you can now record ACH payments for retainer invoices. I did not know this was not a thing. Yeah, but uh, not all payment uh, types have always been supported for uh, for retainer invoices in particular. So kind of a nice one. Just again, we, we talked about it before and we've talked about it with various implementations. If a customer is willing to pay you with ACH, great, right? You don't have to pay that 2.9%. Um, so just being able to make it easy to allow them to do that is pretty much always a good thing if, if you do accept ACH payments. And if you're in India, you can now add Ministry of Micro, Small and Mid-Size Enterprises information uh, details to your, to your books. So jump on that. Um, and this is, you can now apply late fees to your invoices automatically in the U S edition of Zoho books. So I'm looking at it here. It's like, it looks like you're going to apply a percentage base fee. I'm sure there's other things on this dropdown, a fixed amount. I'm, I'm assuming, um, and you can add various criteria to it. Um, and, uh, so there you go. That's yeah, the one interesting pretty. thing I do see with this is that it looks like the late fee invoice is going to be a separate invoice from the main one. As I like read through the settings, it's going to generate a late fee invoice as either a draft or automatically send it. Um, so kind of an interesting one. I think a lot of people would probably want this just added to the existing invoice. Um, could be that I'm misreading it. So don't take my word as bond here, but it does look to be set up that way where it's going to mm. send a separate invoice. Um, this is actually something we've done with Deluge code before. Um, so, you know, like you can give people, an, actually the way we did it was an early payment discount where we put a discount on and then after the due date, it removed itself. Um, you could do the opposite, but a nice one to see, I would imagine if it is going to make its own invoice, they're probably going to get some feedback on that and um, adjust it because I think, if you send it as a separate invoice, a lot of people aren't going to pay it. And then that late fee invoice will have its own late fee invoice will have its own late fee invoice and uh, onward and upward you'll go. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, <clears throat> I would think that they're thinking it's a hard coded invoice, but most of the time people are clicking on the invoice, viewing it online. So you should have that ability to adjust this. So yeah. who knows? We'll, we'll see what that, what that looks like. Um, and you also now have enhanced comments in the history section. So you can kind of add more detailed comments in there as well. Oh, nice. uh, some small changes to Zoho invoice. You, the void option on transfer orders, probably not a bad idea. Uh, cumulative stock for item groups. Nice, nice to Why have. Uh, yep, yep. And uh, I don't know, there's a few other things, but nothing really jumped out of me. A few things for India. Um, that's kind of about it. So that's your Zoho Finance updates for uh, April 2024. And moving on with the news, this is a small one, but a nice one. Um, so in Zoho CRM, they've made some small email related enhancements in the accounts and deals module. Um, it's not really an enhancement. You now have a button. You in the vendors module, they added that. They added that a little while ago, the vendors module. Yeah, but they kind of added. They added proper email support for the vendors module maybe a month or two back. Um, here, right. what they're doing is essentially adding some send email buttons on accounts and deals. And I do want to highlight, I actually like the way that they did this. My initial concern when I saw the send email on an account is that you'd have to like have an email field on the account that it sends to, but they set it up smarter than that. So when you actually click that send email button, it'll give you a list of the related contacts email addresses that you can send to which means you don't have to write some silly little script where you mark one as primary and their email gets copied and blah, blah, blah. You just pick the ones that you want to send to easily. Um, I see that as the right way to implement this. So kudos to Zoho. That is great. Um, and then they did the exact yep. same thing over in the deals module um, using the any of the related contacts in the contacts roles section. Um, so again, two for two. I think they nailed it on both of those. Great update. Um Integrating more and more communications into Zoho is always good. It's one of the main use cases of the CRM. Uh, so we love to see updates yep. like this. Yeah, I like this a lot. This is a very, just a just little bit of a time saver. So yeah, super nice. Super nice. Well, Tyler, that's it. It was a short news week. Uh, great show. I'll see you next week. Oh, hang on. Let's go check Later, out everybody. our implementation. Of <laughs> Bye.
Alrighty, so implementation of the week this week comes from our very own Tom and JP on the consultant and development teams, respectively. And this is all about referral management uh, via CRM automations. So kind of two steps to this that are always important when we're thinking about tracking referrals is one, making sure that it's easy to associate an incoming lead or an incoming deal with the person or group that referred them. And then two, making sure that we can then communicate back to those referral sources about what's happening with those referrals. Right. It's a it's a common thing because that referrer is probably getting some type of kickback from you and they want to be able to make sure that like you're working these leads that you're sending through. So the way the team handled this is they created a custom module that essentially serves to link between an incoming contact or lead and the referrer, which, again, can be a person, a group, a team, uh, all of which are just stored within CRM. Because we want to be able to identify that, you know, one referral could actually send in many different leads over time. And we want to make sure that we track when each of those referrals came through. So data can be entered into that like referral source module, either via an import, like if uh, somebody sends you a spreadsheet or form submissions can route directly in there as well. Um, that data can then be used to track the effectiveness of those various referral sources. So we could pull data like, hey, Referral source A sent us 100 leads and 15 of them became clients. Uh, Referral source B sent us 50 leads, but 30 became clients. So they're sending us better inbound uh, leads than this other source. Last thing we do as well is set up a scheduled function. We're on a regular basis. We'll actually email back to the original referral partner with a summary report of what has happened with all of those particular leads that they have referred in to us. Um, Again, just making sure that we are accountable to our referral partners because they could be sending these leads elsewhere and they're choosing to send them to us. So we want to be able to show them that we're working hard to move these through the pipeline and get them closed. Um, So a nice one here, kind of a clever solution. I like that the team put that custom module in between like the leads and the referral partners, just because now you can add a lot of context, like what type of referral is this? What date did it occur? Did they send any particular information along with it? Where if you're just doing a lookup field, you know, we're like on a lead, you could have a lookup to a referral, then you just get the relationship. You don't get a lot of that other contextual data that you can store once you move it into a custom module. So big shout out to the team. I like this one. I was kind of looking for updates. The cool thing here as well is that like this isn't something that we solved with like a thousand lines of code or a third party integration. Like this is relatively straightforward to set up. Really, the only special sauce is just doing that scheduled function to like organize and email this data out. Um, But there's lots of ways that you can handle that without having to go down any crazy rabbit holes within the CRM. Very nice, man. I must add to that. Good job, Tom and JP. All right, Tyler, with that, let's head back over to Club Z and check out our code share of the week. Well, it might be a slow news week, but it's a busy code share week. We've got not one, but two for you this week. Our very own Alex has come up with some nice little code that's basically going to show you how you can add attachments to Zoho Inventory and Zoho Books through an automated methodology. So maybe you've got an attachment over CRM creator, whatever you want to put it over into, you want to associate it. So while you're in finance, you can go ahead and take a look at it. He has uh, basically given you the code you need to make this happen. So you're not having to download the file, copy the file, upload the file over to inventory or books. This is just going to do it for you and keep those associations. Um, So nifty little bit of code here. Absolutely. Yeah, a lot of these things, like especially when the, the way that Zoho handles files is not always obvious. A lot of the times you have to put it in this particular file endpoint and then get it back from that file endpoint and go and use it. It's the same in CRM as well as here inside of uh, books and inventory. So a great code share just because, again, I really do think this is pretty non-obvious. Once you know how to do it, you're good. It's not that hard, but it just isn't always clear that you're going to have to put it in the magical cloud uh, before you can actually associate it to your record specifically. Very cool. And then moving along to one more code share. This is from, uh, I'm going to pronounce this, what do you think? Slot Simon? Salt, maybe? Salt, Salt? Simon? Salt Simon? Let us know. So if, Salt, if you watch the terms, let us know how badly we butchered that. We apologize in advance. <laughs> He's a community member and uh, did a nice, shared just his journey 
on uh, trying to accomplish basically a Zoho CRM insert new record with wizard details. And uh, it's interesting because, you know, it took him, he says, a day and a half to do this and to figure it out and kind of go through the whole thing. But honestly, this is what it's about. I mean, you know, it's if you really want to code and you're doing stuff in Zoho, sometimes you do have to. Unfortunately, you, bang I think your head a lot of it, man. you just bang yeah. your head against it. <laughs> sometimes you, you don't you can give do. up. <laughs> And it appears he never gave up. Uh, he does comment that uh, he felt like the API documentation was a little inaccurate in uh, putting this together, yeah. which caused him, caused him does some happen. issues and, getting there. Yeah, and so but, the, uh, the kind of specific use case it looks like that he was looking to do here is, you know, when, when you create a record via API, it can sometimes behave differently than if you create it manually. And so in this case, what it looks like is, is they had set up a wizard that was supposed to guide the user through some processes as they're entering out, entering the data. And it would work fine if the user creates it. But their challenge here was, well, I'm going to create it via API. Then when the user picks it up, it should enter the wizard. Um, and so things like this, it's kind of like um, when you want to interact with like a blueprint via API, it's like really not obvious, you know, on how you actually can like change the stage if it's in a blueprint and satisfy everything that's needed. Um, so basically the issue they ran into here is just that uh, the API documentation was not actually giving them everything that they needed. Um, shout out to them. They did do the thing that always works best, which is set up a record that's in the state that you want your record to end up being in and then get that record via API and look at what comes back. Because sometimes Zoho won't add a certain field or parameter to the API docs. But once you look at a record and get all the API information about it, you can see it. Um, so shout out to them for figuring this out. And thanks a ton for sharing it. I'm sure that uh, you might save someone else a day and a half in the future uh, when they find this post. All right. And with that, let's head over to Zanata.com and see what's new over there. Well, we have an article on mastering the lean journey with Zoho. So basically, this is breaking down your leads and uh, whether they're MQL, SQLs, or there's a new one in here that Tyler and I didn't know, a PQL, which we determined is a what? Product Possibly qualified, qualified lead. lead. So Product, Product qualified. qualified. So if you, it's basically someone who has gotten a sample or a trial or some type of freemium access to your product or service. So it kind of makes sense, right? Like they've now like signed up. Um, so looks yep. like here, Wayne's kind of taken us through the way that we use some of this for managing our training course, it looks like, and, and kind of doing some of the marketing and outreach around that. Yep. Yep, going through that, lead capture, how to do it in Zoho, uh, lead qualification stages, setting that up, uh, integrating your marketing data. Then he's going to take you, dump you over to Zoho campaigns or marketing automation and step you through lead nurturing and kind of talking about building up a whole lead nurture program and uh, setting those kind of things up. Uh, then all, you know, deal creation, proposal quote, it's, it's all here. So it's just kind of a nice overview of a uh, how a bill becomes a law. Yeah, or a lead becomes a deal or a sale and uh, kind of stepping you through that whole uh, that whole journey. So uh, very nice. And as always, on Sedona.com, if you don't know, we have a resource library. And if you go into our resource library, we will take you through every single Zoho application. We rank them. Yeah, definitely, these apps are great. You should use them. They're fantastic. They're going to work for 99% of the organizations probably. Uh, these apps might have some things that are missing for some organizations, but probably for 80% of the organizations, these apps are going to work just fine. And then maybe uh, reverse that. Uh, the, they'll work for some organizations, but it's maybe more like 20% of the organizations these will be fine for, but they still got some other deficiencies that, uh, that might not work for them. But in this resource library, if you go in and you click on any of the icons you see in here, we're going to take you through and we're going to share the actual resources that we have put together on this um, over a very, very long period of time. So all of our videos and all of our articles and everything. So uh, head over to Zanata.com, check out our resource library. We think you will find it useful. With that, let's jump over to YouTube and check out our tip of the week. God. 
Well, Tyler, I see you were doing the top 10 marketplace plugins for Zoho CRM. Um, this reminds me of an article I think I wrote six years ago, top, top 14 applications for Zoho CRM or something like that. Um, it's pretty cool. So you did you just kind of deep dive and look at the ones that had the most ratings, the most stars? How did you, how did you yeah, determine kind of the something? The way that I structured this is I put them into three categories. So the first category is like things to make sure that your data quality is good. Um, so I cover like this is not a health check plugin, an email checker and a phone checker that we use a lot for our clients. Um, second section, I go over some just kind of workflow improvers, right? Things that make the system just work a little better and easier. So things like Wes from Blue Root, the workflow enhancement suites. Um, there's this really cool little free plugin that lets you search notes in CRM that I found for a client a while back. And it's it's nothing crazy, but it's free. And it's something that a lot of people need if they use notes a lot. Um, then we went into work drive integration, Mapsly for being able to map your clients. And then I covered two of the most commonly used SMS integrations. We get asked about those all the time um, and a power dialer. So I would kind of cover phone burner as well for those who need to be able to just call and call and call as fast as possible. So hopefully, hopefully everyone finds this one useful. Uh, goal here was just getting an overview of a lot of the things that we get asked for a lot. Um, where we do know some great uh, existing extensions that make it where we don't need to build this for you from scratch. Um, yep. Most of them are pretty darn affordable. Phone burner is very expensive, but very good. Um, but well worth taking a look at these uh, if you're looking to add some functionality to the system without having to build it yourself. Very cool. Yeah, and I think we use, like you said, the nice thing about these are we recommend these and implement them for our clients all the time. You know, so some yeah. really interesting stuff there. And if you haven't checked out West, that's kind of a different one among all kinds of extensions that allows you yeah. basically to build things that you could only do through Deluge code or writing a script. Yeah. And it kind of will, it basically writes the script for you. Kind of, kind yeah. of nice. Kind so, of like copy of value from a module, sum the deals into the account, right? Things like that, that normally you would need Deluge for. Um, so yeah, we, we do love that one. It's a great plugin. Fantastic. All right. And now let's take a look at our question of the week from Azaz. All righty. So Greg is how to override auto numbers with API. Kevin Chambers asks, is there a way to keep auto numbers generated, but also use the API to override them? And I'm guessing the answer is yes. <laughs> because otherwise nope, we probably video have... right we just say no <laughs> um, so uh yeah. there is go ahead yeah and this this can be a, a nice implementation for a pretty specific type of use case so imagine you have a company that's doing some sales through a sales team maybe b2b sales through distributors or resellers but they also do e-commerce right and sell directly to consumer and so they might want to say, hey, for those B2B sales, use the auto-generated numbers. We do that, That'll work great. But for e-commerce, we want to use the Shopify number as our order number so that they can just stay perfectly aligned between the two systems. Uh, so Greg will kind of take you through in this walkthrough how to accomplish that type of setup. Um, I will highlight, I think a lot of the times this isn't totally necessary because you can always put like that Shopify ID in the reference number field. So you've still got it and it'll carry through the process. Uh, but if you are particularly picky about uh, this kind of naming convention, all good. This video will take you through exactly how to set it up. Yes, and if you're watching us on YouTube, you see the video is just buffering, but uh, I can still scroll <laughs> and see what uh, where where Greg's at in the video. But anyway, check Shout out, out the uh, Mesh Network this week, everybody. It is. Uh... <laughs> the network says this all ends by the time next week happens. Anyway. Uh, and if you don't know, if you head over to youtube.com, that is where all of our content is. You can also find it in the resource library, but we are posting things almost on a daily basis. Uh, so go over to youtube.com slash Sonata, subscribe, hit the bell, get notifications when our new videos come out. Tyler is on fire. 545 views on your marketplace app map. And you are We'll have a big one. We'll have a big one coming out next week. Um, we'll be diving back into the kiosk studio. We had a, a lot of great feedback on the first video, so I'm going to do a more advanced walkthrough. 
Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Um, starting to see the light on that feature. I have to admit, when I recorded the first tip video on Kiosk, I kind of struggled to see why I would use it over a blueprint. Um, but Ben Woida on our team, one of our consultants, actually showed me how he was using one. And it immediately inspired me to make a video because it's like, oh, that's how you want to be using Kiosk. So keep an eye out for that one, everybody. I hope that will be uh, supremely useful for you as we uh, dive further into that new feature. All righty. Well, with that, Tyler, let's wrap up the show, my friend. Um, another good one. It's in the back. Another bag. good one. Quick one this week. Light we news week. Uh, yeah, light news week for you, for everybody. Yes. Yeah, sorry about that. Well, there are a bunch of stories, but they're just small little things. Like, uh, there must be like 50 mobile updates to Zoho Desk, right? There were just so many Zoho Desk yeah. updates all on mobile. But nothing really all that major. But, you know, if you subscribe to our newsletter, Tyler, you get... You get all the all the stories, not just you the do we all the about. news every single Monday morning. Every Monday morning, yep, at six a.m. Pacific time, delivered to your inbox. Did you know that? Wow! What and that's Too free. Much. I can get all that for free just by signing up for the newsletter. It's two hundred dollars a month, but oh, it's okay. worth what it. a deal! <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe free, maybe free. Anyway, all right, everybody, thank you so much for listening. As always, if you would like to get in touch with us over here at Zanata, we would love it if you would just head over to Zanata.com and click on Book a Meeting, and you'll be talking to us in no time at all. On the website is where you'll find complete episodes of the show, as well as links to all the stories we discussed today. Uh, if you want that news delivered to your inbox every single Monday morning, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. And last but not least, we always appreciate when you like and subscribe here on YouTube, as well as your choice of podcast app. We'll see you next Friday. Take care, everybody. And they say nothing in life is free. So it's just not true. You can get a newsletter for free videos for free so much.